Hey everybody, Todd Bettenhausen here and we're coming back to part two of my cockpit build video series. I went ahead and did part three where I showed the uh, the 8020 material that I was using to build this frame from, but now uh, I've gone back and I've done some more work on the CAD model, including some sheet metal parts that are required to get this thing done. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll look at a top view of this thing. And these lines around the outside here that I'm pointing out with the mouse represent part of a room. And you can see that I've sized this thing to fit exactly in a room. This is a custom sheet metal mount. I'll show it in just a minute so you get a better idea of the size and shape of the whole thing. But it sits in one corner, attaches to two walls. Here's another one that attaches to the adjacent wall. These represent windows in the corner. Um, luckily, this is the east side or, or the northeast side of the house. So we're not going to have any light problems in the evening when I usually race, and if I do, I'll black them out. And then down here, over in this area, is a French doorway. But here is the, the third adjacent wall where the third projector goes. Um, this is, of course, looking down on my cockpit. These round things are, are Clark Synthesis transducers. They're for SimVibe, which uses telemetry from the simulators to put vibrations in the cockpit from road textures, gear shifting, hitting curbs, engine vibration, that sort of thing. That's www.simexperience, S-I-M-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-C-E dot -E -E com. So that's what those are. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at, at one of the projector mounts a little bit more closely. You can see this block is a simplified representation of the projector hanging underneath the mount. If we look around at the front here, we've got the light path modeled. We've gone ahead and, and set the projectors to a medium throw. These are manual focus, manual zoom, NEC, NP, V260X projectors. So we're sure that, that this frame is going to sit pretty much in this exact spot in the room. These are 4 to 3 projectors. They're 1024 by 768. I've been experimenting with them now. I've got over 40 hours a piece on them. They've been excellent for sim racing. Um, I'm going to use one of Leo Bodner's input lag testers to find out what the input lag really is, but all my subjective testing has been very good so far. And one thing before we go any further on this, um, looking down from the top, the angle between the center and side screens is 60 degrees as measured by eye racing. My eyeballs are right here. If I draw a line straight across from the outer edge of one screen to the outer edge of the other, it's a full 179 degree field of view. And the really cool thing about this is I'm obliterating the non-driving environment. Um, this thing's almost down on my shins. The crossbar on the bottom center screen is almost down on my shins. And the, the top screen is, uh, is much higher, the top of the screen is much higher than I'm used to seeing when I'm driving and iRacing. Um, those of you familiar with iRacing.com, probably the biggest cockpit in iRacing is the truck, the NASCAR truck. And I can see the sheet metal in the roof of the truck above the top roll cage bar. And when I look to the right, I can see the entire right side window, the whole perimeter of it. So really, this thing is in your face. When you're sitting in this thing, um, in order to look outside of the screens, you're really, really going to have to try. Um, just to give you an idea of scale here, these screen frames are made out of 10 series 8020 extruded profile, and the frame is all 15 series. This is 1530, or one and a half by three and a half inch. Same with the main cross beam. And then the front is actually 1545. It's four and a half by one and a half inches. And the reason I've done that is I wanted to get the pedals a little bit higher relative to the seat. Um, the seat here is one of Pat Dotson's Ultra Force GS4 seats. It has panels inside the seat that move to simulate G-forces. And I know people always ask me for URLs, so I'll go ahead and give the URL for that. It's www.ultraforcesim.com, U-L-T-R-A-F-O-R-C-E-S-I-M.com. So that seat is as low as it can be. There's some hardware under that seat that runs the motion panels, and these are play seat sliders. And when I modeled this thing, I actually used what, this is SolidWorks 2013, I used what are called limit mates, and I actually controlled how far that seat can slide, both forward and back. And I've got it set in a, in a place that's appropriate for me. I'm 5'10". Uh, it'll fit a lot of people that way, you know, of about that build. 
You can see also here that I've, I've got a mono post wheel mount, and I was a little bit afraid to do that at first, but the reason I went ahead and did that is because my pedals, I can really control the position left and right, and I've set up the, the pedals, and I'll say more about those in a minute, so that the throttle and the brake are evenly spaced on the center line of the chassis. So that post should be pretty much, um, I shouldn't even know it's there, hopefully. Um, I've made some custom mounts here. This is part of that sheet metal work that I had to finish up before I could come back to part two. These are mounts for the Thrustmaster T500RS. They fit the rubber pads in the bottom of the wheel with an eighth inch to spare all the way around. Here's the mounting holes for the wheel. And then you can see they attach to this 1515 upright with normal inch and a half T-nuts, two fasteners per side. Working our way to the front, here's more of that custom sheet metal. This is a heel plate. My pedals are the HE Sim pedals. That's Niels Huizinkvold, Huizinkvold Engineering. He's in the Netherlands. He's a, he's a Dutch engineer that just does some fantastic work. Um, don't know the URL off the top of my head. He only built six sets of them, but they're, they're extremely high-end sim racing pedals. And one end of the pedals bolts to this beam, the other end bolts to this beam, and then this plate here is a heel rest. You can see it bolts to the back of this profile, and also it bolts to the top of the, the backbone of the cockpit. One more little bit of custom sheet metal that I did. I went ahead and designed a cart, custom fitted for my Sim Vibe amp, which will sit here, and my open air chassis PC, which will sit here. This is again 1010 series profile. It's tapped on both ends, so you just bolt the top and bottom shelf down, and that makes a rigid shelf. I've got my floor levelers here. I've got those on the bottom of the equipment rack, and on the bottom of the screen frame. And then this is pretty cool. These these are vibration isolators. They're from um, Clark Synthesis also. And they're bolted right under the, the transducers. So I don't think I've left anything out. Um, the seat mounts are similar to what I've done in the past. In fact, I've actually sold a couple of sets of those. So again, those are as low as I can make them. And these are play seat sliders. I'll give one more look here quick before I sign off. Oh, let me explain something else. I've had a, a couple of questions here about, about whether or not these uprights are going to be visible while driving. I had to do something to hold up this corner of the screen frame on each side, and you can see these uprights are one piece. They go all the way down to the floor. There's a leveler. And just to give you an idea of scale, these are 30 inches wide. They're 40 inch diagonal 4 to 3 screens. So. If you look here carefully, we've modeled the, the light path of these projectors, and you can see it it comes out to the this and this are on the same plane. There's a half inch gap all the way around just for fine tuning and leveling. And if you look from the top, you can see that the light path of these projectors misses this post, the center projector and the side projectors both. They missed this post by a half inch or a little bit more on both sides. So the lights can be shining right around that post and you're not even going to know it's there in use. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the projector mounts a little better. You can see that they have flanges that, that bolt to the wall. This is the one that goes in the corner, bolts to one wall, bolts to the other wall, and then the others uh, just attach to single walls. And I've got the angles all worked out where these things should be really close when I mount them. You'll notice here the mounting holes that mount this one to the projector via its normal ceiling mount holes are actually just three round holes. So I'll measure and I'll bolt this one in first. I'll bolt this one to the wall first. Then I'll come back and I'll bolt this one in the corner. And if you look closely here, you can see I've, I've designed these as slots. The center of this slot and this slot are this bolt hole here. And what that'll do is allow me to, to close up the seam. If, if the walls in the room aren't perfectly square, it'll allow me to, to close up the gap between these pictures, the left and right picture, and the, or I mean the, the left and the center picture, and the right and the center picture. Same thing over here. Here's the projector mount over by the French doors. By the way, they won't look hideous. At least I hope they won't. They're going to be powder coated in, in something approximating semi-gloss white interior paint. 
but again you can see there's the hole that it pivots about when I aim it and there's the, the slots. In order to get these things level, I'm going to have a 5 millimeter piece of silicone tubing at each mounting point. And depending on how much I tighten those, I can control the, the level and the tip up and down of these projectors. I did the same thing in my home theater installation and it worked out really, really well, except those were just neoprene washers and they didn't offer nearly as much adjustability as these will. So there's where I'm at with things. All the parts are off to fabrication. Um, they should all be done hopefully in the coming week. Uh, I'm really excited to see this thing start to come together. I've got, I've got high hopes for a, a really immersive driving experience, uh, and hopefully I'm happy enough with it to, to stop tinkering uh, for quite some time and really begin to enjoy the simulator again, because I've really gotten wrapped up in, in a lot of building projects, and it seems like I just move from one to the next to the next. So there's where we're at right now. Again, Todd Bettenhausen here. Uh, if you've got any questions, if you're a member of iRacing, it's best to ask them in the thread in the iRacing forum. I don't get to YouTube as often as I should to respond to comments. Uh, I've had a lot of noise, a lot of trolling on my videos, and that just tends to make me stay away. So hopefully I'm, a, I'm sharing some information that's helpful to some people or at least inspirational for you to start your own projects. But I'll be the first to admit that I'm not really good about catching individual comments or questions at YouTube. So that's it for now. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time, and this thing will start to actually become operational. So long.